Okay, guys. So here we're going to look at a um, sort of the last little bit of what I was talking about before about the Tesla and Edison uh, current wars. So uh, very quickly, uh, let me do a very brief, incredibly brief version of what we've already talked about so far so we can make sure we're all on the same page. So we had Edison, uh, very well established, famous, wealthy, hardworking, very serious. We had Tesla. Uh, the new generation, very unknown, uh, sort of a nerdy OCD type, um, but uh, more of a scientist who works with theory. And then he comes to America, gets hired by Edison, and uh, Tesla then starts trying to convince Edison of, hey, hey, let's start using some alternative current. Alternative current is the future. And Edison says, no, nah, that's okay. I've got the patents, the patents for DC and so I'm going to make a lot of money off of that DC current. I don't need to change it to something called AC. So we'll just, uh, I'm not interested. And uh, Tesla goes, okay, all right, get back to work. And then Tesla goes back to work. And then at some point it says, hey, hey, I've got this great idea. Can you uh, solve this problem? I'll give you a million bucks. Now remember that was $50,000, but that's like saying a million bucks. And then Tesla says, cool. He says, all right, yeah, ha ha, go ahead, try to solve it. Tesla does and says, hey, so uh, where's my money? Edison says, what are you talking about? I was just joking. Edison says, yeah, well, I quit. So Edison goes, uh, I'm sorry, Edison goes, yeah, whatever. And goodbye, Tesla. Tesla goes away, gets very poor. He becomes a ditch digger until finally he's introduced to Westinghouse. And Westinghouse goes, hey, uh, what do you got for me? And Tesla says, I got this great AC current thing going on. And uh, Westinghouse says, great, let's go for it. And then there is the uh, giant current wars. The, the current wars take place, and that's where we have the fun stuff happening, like Edison killing elephants uh, for the public just to show how dangerous uh, AC was, uh, forgetting that people might think that DC is also very dangerous, that electricity in general is very dangerous. But uh, this was, you know, uh, how it went down. And then finally... Uh, Tesla and Westinghouse win and that is why we actually have alternating current in uh, let's go back to there here we go that's why we have alternating current now used in our homes now the question of course was why uh, did alternating current win now let's just very quickly review this Edison had an idea where we would have uh, individual homes being given their own power stations. Uh, whereas Tesla saw an idea of having a very uh, centralized system. So what we mean is something in the center, a, a large power station that would spread out to everywhere. Uh, now, the reason why Edison had to have individual power stations is because, well, he had to. He had no choice. And we've gone through that problem. The issue is now, of course, about how many watts your average home takes. We calculated about 1,700 watts for an average home. And this led to what size of wire you would have to use. And uh, we have a little chart. You made a little graph. You can now quickly make um, some sort of uh, prediction as to what size wire you would need if you increase the res the desired current. Uh, when we found out that, wait a minute, okay, that's for one home, but what if we hook up, you know, uh, a few thousand homes, suddenly the size of wire that you need to run that current is now in the realm of anywhere between 50 or 40 centimeters to nine meters. It's huge it's it's the size of wire that is just not reasonable there's no way we're going to do that but we did find out one other thing we said well what if you increase increase the voltage so this is where we're at right now right right now we we realize that we cannot work with a um super high current because high current, let's just say this now, high current means increased wire size. And that's no good. Too big. They're too big. 
the wires are too big. It's ridiculous. So what do we do instead? We say uh, go with high voltage, so high V. So say uh, 120,000 volts. Great. This works out really well because now if my voltage is really high, my current is actually down to an incredibly low and reasonable amount. And I don't need to have an incredibly high uh, size diameter wire to do this. So I think everything's great. The only problem uh, we talked about this was that if you had 120,000 volts going out in your outlet or your receptacle on a wall, you're going to get a whole mile of lightning coming out of there and it's going to be killing everybody because that is way too much voltage the voltage difference is enough to jump to the ground and ground itself constantly we would have fires all the time uh, it would be pretty horrifying actually uh, so we don't want that we don't want that at all what we want is a solution where uh, somehow uh, we can start start with uh, 120,000 and maybe carry it for some time uh, on high voltage wires what we call high voltage wires and those are those really tall uh, electrical wire towers that we see outside of a city usually not usually inside of a city because that is really strong voltage high voltage wires and then we end up with about 220 volts uh, so we so we change this is the problem here. We have to change the voltage somehow. We have to change the voltage to 120 volts in the house. So the question is, how do we do that? And so the solution in this case is using the concept of induction. And we've already talked about that. So let's have a quick review of how this is going to work because somehow we must change the voltage. In other words, we must transform, transform the whole thing. So if you remember, the, the idea was that if I have uh, a wire and I'm moving a current along, it has produced a, a magnetic field. And so I'm going to have it on one side. If I use my right hand rule, I'll notice that I have it on one side out. Uh, popping out uh, and then on the other side it's going in again uh, because it is going along in a loop and so I have this magnetic field created by my current and the idea is that well wait a minute what if I had uh, another loop of wire uh, on one side like so what would happen and then well the truth is is that nothing would happen nothing would happen but if I changed my if I if I if I change change my current then I will change my magnetic field the magnetic field is connected to this it is connected to the current Remember, you, you want to make sure that you know all your equations so this makes perfect sense. But I'm, what I'm looking at here is that a change in my current will change my magnetic field. It is completely connected to the strength of my current. So if I have no current, I got no magnetic field. And as I increase my current, I will increase the strength of my magnetic field. So, But if I change it, that is a change in the magnetic flux. And if I change the magnetic flux in a loop, therefore I'm changing D, B, A, and it's the B I'm kind of interested in here, then I'm going to create an EMF. In other words, the loop, what will the loop do? Will want to do what? Tell me what it is. Yes! bring back the the flux bring back the flux it wants to bring back the flux which means if this uh, wire for example if I went from I to I 
equaling zero. In other words, if I just turned off my wire, if I turned off my wire, this will immediately want to continue this way. It's going to want now the question is, is which direction is this current going to go? You're going to have to think a bit about how do I create a, um, a magnetic field that is also going downwards in the middle of my loop. You got to think about that. That would be a current. Uh, suddenly I would get a current. Let's just draw that current while we're at it. It's going to be spinning around my loop. But only, remember, this is only, only when the magnetic field changes. So the only way um, Edison could do that would be he'd have to have a direct current that was turning on and off, on and off, on and off. And I, you don't really want your current continually going on and off, on and off, on and off. That's that's not really the best thing also how do you do it how do you do it it's it's a really annoying thing because you're 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 basically making a bunch of switches that are continually shutting on and off your power so this is where tesla just found that he was at a complete advantage because uh if you if you think about it let's just go back to alternating current look what's happening I don't have the electrons moving in one direction. I have them going back and forth, back and forth, which means I am changing my current constantly, constantly from a positive current to a negative current. And at times zero, you can see it actually goes to zero at certain points, but I am continually changing it. And if I am changing my current, that means I'm also changing my magnetic field at the same time. Alternating current automatically has, automatically has a changing magnetic field. And this is something that Tesla said is going to save the day. So let's just take a look at that. Okay. We're going to look at how a transformer works. So here we got something. Now, what are you looking at? Let me talk about this. This is a transformer. It's the last thing we're going to be doing in this class. So please pay close attention. Now I'm going to have a wire. Let's just bring it over here and I'm going to be going to either side of a voltage source. But this is going to be, um, I'll draw it now, it's going to be an alternating current. So just remember that means that I got current going this way, then I got it going this way, then I got it going that way. It's just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And what you'll notice is that I will have what's called my IP. This is the primary, primary meaning first, the primary current. Okay, so you'll notice that everything on this side is known as primary. And uh, so the transformer is actually quite simple. We have a first, we're going to have my wire coming from my power source. This is my original power source. And it is going to be turned into a solenoid. I'm going to get a whole bunch of coils uh, winding around this solid. Now, I shouldn't say solid. I'm not going to say solid. Sorry, it is actually um, several uh layers if you look closely this is probably cut up in a whole like hundreds of little thin sheets there's a reason for that um, I'll talk about that in class uh, not right now but basically this is you, you can treat this right now as a big thick piece of iron it is actually a whole bunch of sheets of iron uh, slapped together like a giant sandwich but the idea is that you have this large constant square shape Okay, so on one side of the square, I have wrapped what my I'm going to call my primary winding or the primary coil. And as you know, what will happen is that if I'm changing, uh, well, actually, I don't even need to change. If I have a current going through that coil, I have created a magnetic field. So a few things to remember. I've got a my original voltage. I've got my current resulting from this voltage, and I've got myself a certain number of turns, what we're going to call the N sub P. So that's the number of turns for this coil. 
Now, what's interesting is that because of this iron core, my magnetic field, apart from a few minor uh, fluctuations, the magnet field actually follows along this iron core. It goes in a big circle. So the magnetic flux is actually going to be going around that green dotted line here. It's going in a big circle. Now this is great because what I'm going to do then is I'm going to make a secondary set of windings on the other side. A secondary set. Now remember, there is a magnetic field going through it. And because it is alternating, it is going to go up and down, up and down. So when there is a big change to my flux, I'm going to have a induced induced magnetic field uh, in here or rather an induced current so the secondary current is created by induction from the changing magnetic field from the primary current okay and now just remember we have then we have our uh, voltage what we call the secondary voltage this is primary on this side this is secondary on this side so we have the same things we've got a uh, a current and we have uh, the number of windings here and these all become very important now why is that now I want you to look at this and this is actually what's really really cool about transformers is that the main thing is not that wow I can make current without touching that's really cool and everything the fact is is that there is a really interesting mathematical relationship here that Tesla found out I'm gonna write it down right here the voltage of the secondary divided by the voltage of the primary is equal to the number of turns of the secondary divided by the number of turns of the primary. Now take a look at that. Let's think about what that means. This is actually really amazing. Because what this means is that, okay, let's say I start off with 120,000 volts and I did 100 turns here. Okay, I got 120,000. One, two, three. Um, now, I don't know. Let's just call this voltage secondary because I don't know what voltage is going to be here. But I do know uh, that my primary windings are 100. Now look what's going to happen. What kind of voltage do you want? Okay, I got 120,000. Let's look at the initial step down. The initial step down, uh, it, you should see uh, in, your, in your notes, in the little drawing we made, was that the first one is that we dropped down to a voltage of 12,000. Was it 12,000 or was it 1,200? I better look it up here. Just want to make sure I'm saying this correctly. No, 12,000. 12,000 volts. Okay, 12,000 volts. So that means I want 12,000. I want 12,000 volts. Right there. All I need to do then is change. This is really cool. All I got to do is change the number of windings of my coil. Let's think about it. That would mean I would be doing... 12,000, right? 12,000 over 120,000. And then I'm going to multiply by 100 because I'm bringing 100 over here. And that will equal my number. Let me see. That will equal my number of windings. Now, what do I got there? What do I got there? 10. 10. This all equals 10. So what does that tell me? That means if I got 100 on this side, 100 turns, I need 10 turns to drop the voltage of this side down to 12,000. That's all I'm doing is I'm changing the number of turns. And suddenly now I've induced a current over here, but I've got a different voltage on the other side. That's it. That's all I got to do.
That's amazing. And this is something that Tesla said is going to, you can automatically do it because we're already got our changing current happening constantly. So we're always producing a magnetic field. It is a magnetic field that's coming up and down, up and down, up and down. Now it's not constant magnetic field, of course, but it is, uh, enough to be getting a secondary current on the other side. Now, the only thing I want you to do is I want you to think about this and ask yourself, okay, so what would be the graphs? In other words, can I make a graph here? Let me just erase everything here. Can I make a graph where I talk about, okay, what is my primary current? What does that look like? What's my primary current look over time? And then I ask myself, okay, so then what does, um, when is the B field strongest? When is the B field weakest? That's for my primary. And then give me another graph. Let's consider all this homework. This is homework question. What does the current of your secondary windings look like? What does it look like? So that's a question for you. What does, it, what does the secondary current windings look like over time what do those three graphs look like what is the relationship between them for example when this one for example when this one's really high at maybe a, like a maximum max we'll just call this max to min right a max, uh, positive positive i max and this is negative i max in other words the amplitudes of my wave i know i know what it's going to look like we already talked about it. it's going to it's going to do something like that but the question is is when you draw this what does the B field, when is the B field strongest? And when is the secondary, uh, the secondary current strongest or weakest? How are they connected to each other? I'd like to know that. So if you can please try that uh, once you review this uh, video one more time, uh, make sure you have that ready for the next class. Okay, bye now.